Hello everyone, I'm Alex the Handman. Today I'm going to install a commercial water heater. I usually you to solder to get the connections I do I solder my copper fittings with a torch and with the solder, but not anymore. Since I bought this tool I have here, the rigid 241, I haven't used the solder anymore. So I'm gonna show you how it works. This is the Rigid Pro Press 241. And it's not too big. It comes with a battery, so you put the battery in the back, turn the unit on, then we're gonna install the head. We're gonna use three quarters today. So this is a three quarter head. I'm gonna put in my unit and then this pin I press in. So this is ready to go. Now I'm gonna tell you, I have pro press fitting here and this is three quarter. So what you do to prepare the pipe, you're supposed to deburr the inside and the outside a little bit to remove the shavings and then just slide this scuff it and clean it and then since this is a three-quarter pipe it's supposed to go three-quarter all the way in so you have to slide it in all the way home you're gonna open the jaws And then you're gonna press this button. And it takes three seconds to make the press. So now this is this has been pressed, leak proof. So what do I love the Rigid 241? because it's light, easy to go anywhere in every corner. In some cities you have to have an open flame permit to work with a torch. You don't have to do that anymore. In most of the buildings I work for, I have to shut the water off and then wait half an hour to three hours until the whole building drains because we solder if there's any water you cannot solder it, re it rejects the solder and you cannot complete that join but with this system as you're gonna see in my video even if there's some water you still can use this and press your fitting and it's gonna be leak free you don't have to call the alarm company to cancel the alarm for three hours while you solder do you want to see this tool in action before let's go and take a look how these guys bring the new water heater 300 to 500 pounds they bring it down and then take the old one out they use this hydraulic dolly and it's awesome to see how they do it commercial water heater so the first thing we have to do is shut the gas off and we've done it already 
you have to unplug the unit or cut the power to the unit to, to this box. It could be a switch on the side, it could be a conduit, or it could be uh, just a cord like I did. We have to shut the water off to both. This one I already did. We have to do this. And then we, we have to start draining the tank. So we're going to put a hose here to a drain. And then in order to the tank to drain, we have to break the vacuum. And we do that by removing, I already removed the uh, safety relief valve. That way air goes into here and it breaks the vacuum so we can uh, empty the whole tank. Also, you have to remove the flu, the flu pipes. Yes. So you have to remove the dielectric unions. This was very hard, so I just cut it. This one. It was easy to remove. And now we're going to remove all the gas piping. OK, so we capped all the openings that we are not using, the top and the side. And now we're going to work on the front ones. So that's what we're going to use this one and this one. Okay, one more time. We open the jaw, we put the tool around the ring. We're gonna press the button. It takes about three seconds. How beautiful is that? Do you see water coming out of this fitting? The beautiful of this tool is that you can do this while you have water on the system. Of course, we shut off, shut off everything, but if you are soldering in a regular system, any drip of water will not allow you to do the work. With this, it's okay if you have some water. This is the inch and a quarter, it's smaller, so we can go everywhere easier. So let's start with the beginning. I'm gonna do the first one. So now, uh, I have three quarter pipe here, and it's very easy to, the head to be replaced. So I'm just gonna pull this pin, remove the head, and this is a three quarter. Just press it, put it in there, push the pin, and it's ready to go. Now, I'm gonna open the jaw again. Open the valves to fill the tank and test where it leaks. So you have to start easy, don't open it all the way, start easy, and then you're going to release air from uh, the safety relief valve. So what you're going to do, you're going to, if you hear the air, all the air from the tank has to come out as the water fills up and pushes it out. Okay. 
Once the water starts coming out from here, then you shut it off, the, the safety relief out. So I'm opening the hot water to remove the air that was from here, from here up to the nearest uh, sink. So we finished all the installation and look how beautiful it looks, how clean it looks. So um, if this project were to be inspected, what the inspector looks for is a nipple, a dielectric nipple or a dielectric union or a brass union. This is a brass union and the brass is the only metal that is allowed to be touching the, uh, the regular nipple, the metal nipple. But here we have both. We have the dielectric union and the brass union. Also, so here on the gas connections, what the inspector is looking for is a union so the valve can be serviced and a drip leg for the debris to fall at the bottom of the drip leg. Also, um, the inspector looks for a setting of 120 degrees on the dial because this is a residential water heater. It's a commercial water heater for apartments. Also, what they want to see is a ground connection. So this is a three-prone and it's grounded to the box as well. Nowadays, inspector wants to see a, a, a motorized damper. So when the water here is off, the damper closes and that way it, it uh, saves uh, water and energy and money. And then if you see here, this is the flue pipe. Inspector wants at least a quarter of an inch per foot. Also on the safety relief valve, the inspector wants to see the discharge pipe no more than six inches from the floor and not less than inch and a half. So the perfect height is between two and five. So right now we have about three inches. Also, the inspector wants to see a temperature gauge on the hot side. So as you could see now, my gauge measures 121. 